right now. Let's go. This one's for better bears. Wackos. Better bears, wackos. Doing a feedback paint over right now. Okay. Okay, okay. We have this beautiful painting here. And our artist would like some help on how to make the look more, the fur more smexy, more yes fight, more. Mm. And that's the problem that we're gonna be solving today, right now, right here. First things first. Let me read again what was the trouble with the charger. I believe the fur is specifically, especially because it's a lion, we gotta be changing the mane here. At first it reminded me still a little bit of wolves. Let's make it more feline. We gotta make it, bring it a little bit more close into the feline area. What is the feline area? Huge muzzles, round ears, fluffy all around. Not like wolves that is more below ears. No, 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 we gotta make the fluff everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. First things first, I gotta make sure that it's really according to the charger features. Let's start by changing the charger. The ears do are big, but I will not make this. Let's start changing it. What is this layer? All the markings, okay. Thank you very much for the BSD file. Look at this boy. The fur is not much going that up. You gotta make the fur really just going out of the face, you know, like, ah, so pretty. I know there are huge locks of fur here, but we are not going to follow them exactly that way. Sometimes it's the art style of the arts that did reference shit. That's something that I got myself into asking loads of times, like, is this really a feature or this is like the art style of the person that drew, drew it? Can I draw it my way? Can I draw it in another way? Do I really need to follow like this huge fluff part or can I do this huge fluff part a little bit more soft, more gentle? always good to notice not only the frontal view but the back view because in the back you can see even more for fluffer fluffer and that's what we want a lot of fluff fluff fluffer i believe this type of face is your art style but if you would like of course the chin can get bigger specifically on felines lions even more they have the chin a little bit more squarish they have a lot of fur here, just a little bit. Yeah. Now we go into, hey, since this fur is a very bright, is a bright, extremely bright color, I'm not going to think too much of intense shadows, especially because of the ambient that this charger is. This charger is in a very bright place. There's not going to have a lot of dark places in the body, in the mane, only of course in those places that it got those dark markings. Am I taking that out? those places here. Yeah, let's just go for a huge light. A bright color in a bright ambient cannot go dark, dark, dark. Only if it's like occlusion shadow, it's like that close to the skin. I understand those places. Places like here, only if it's a sunset or there's a cray cray light. You can use it as an example, the snow. The snow is not going to get that darker. The darkest place in the snow here is this. That's pretty much how dark it should be getting the fur. I forgot to mention, the sky is blue, right? The fur is bright, right? We get reflection of the blue sky into the charger. The char charger is really getting purples, but the ambient's not so purple. If the ambient was more purple-ish, that would make more sense. It's important to think, hey, my charger is here in, the, in a certain ambient. So all of the ambient is going to affect your charger. Just like an animal in the wild. That animal adapted and evolved to be in that certain area. You cannot bring a fish to live in the middle of a desert. Your body can be brighter. If this call, this painting here is already all the tones going a little bit darker, it means I can make you brighter. Let's make you brighter. First, we think of light and shadows, and then we go into details. I still have not added any details, any fur details. Right now, I'm focusing on, hey, let's make everything go well together. Like, your eyes are all blurred, and you look far from far away, and you go like, yeah, that's a good drawing. The body's not centralized. Nobody gonna know. What if they not, they, they not gonna know? 
let me show the changes that we did already. Now the color is much more soft. It was really dark. Now we can see how dark it was. Oh my. It was really dark. And in the middle of the snow, it cannot be this dark. And you can see the lights coming from above, like the corner, somewhere around here. A little bit more upwards, this shadow here is saying that to me. This is a really important part that, you, that I need you guys to understand. When I was fixing that, I was thinking, light shadows, light shadows. Is this going accordingly to the background? Is this not going accordingly to the background? Now let's keep adding some highlight. Your eyes are all full of reflection, so you know this part here about having reflection. So if this area is having reflection, why not this area right here is going to receive a reflection? There is all of this whitish fur right here. It's going to reflect upwards. And if it's going to reflect upwards, it means this area here is going to be brighter. look far away we can see the charge is not aligned but the face is perfectly aligned we're gonna get that body also aligned all the down area brighter yeah brighter brighter okay we get brighter it's wood I'm gonna reflect we don't want those cars to be calling attention we want the face the character, the character to be calling attention. All this fluffy fur is going to have a layer here because it's really accumulated above the chest area. I believe we can start just playing right now a little bit more with fur. Perspective is really strong in the glasses. My face is not in a strong perspective. It's about us just observing our art and all the time questioning, hey, is this in the right place? Should this be here? Or should I just change a little bit? Control M, I open a new tab, uh, beep, here, now you guys can see this new tab, here, this is Control M, curves, in other words, and then I'm going to blue, I just cre created a dot here to just hold everything, and now I start just changing it, I can see how much it changes, 
You can see in the back what is happening. Can you see in the back what is happening? I can see in the back. Okay, how I analyze a background. We already did the blue shadow. I'm trying to think of the color composition here. The pattern chosen for the skateboard is yellow and green, and it was on purple. The yellow does make sense, but if you add the green, it's going to become a triad. But there is the blue in the background, so it become like a quadruple color combination. And we really want to be calling attention the good way. So what I'm going to do here is the basic blues, purples with yellows. We're gonna go for yellowish colors here. You can see here, shadows make everything blue. That's what I learned with this image. So we gotta get that blue out of it. We gotta get a blue overlay, come here. It can be color dodge too. Since there is a amount of light hitting here, I'm going to make light here going even further, even further, even more down. Definitely cards. I have full blockage of trees. But where is the ever evergreen tree? Evergreen tree, heck yeah. Evergreen trees are the ones that survive the most to snowy areas. So that's why we changed it to evergreen trees. That's what makes me confused, because if the snowbird's behind the shoulder and there is this shadow casted here, it means the light's coming from behind the charter and it's coming from behind the charter. I should be making a ring light all around the charter. And I'm going to do already here, a little bit. But it doesn't show the same light that is coming here in the abs. You can see here, there's frontal light in the abs, not even up. Here it shows a little bit up. But here it shows frontally, Specif specifically the shadow here, it shows us coming frontally. I'm gonna change those arms, because if we draw here, elbow, and frontally, more reef, elbow for muscle going here. Oh my, when I click it. Okay, muscle going here, it changes, go up to here. Here is the wrist bone. And if here is the wrist bone, the hand's going, the hand can stretch up to here. And if there is one bending point, only one, but it's not like this going up. It's going like this going down. I would change it a little bit. Let me go everything in one layer. Remember, when you're applying the shadow into your charger fur, 
into the bright color of your charger. Don't make it too saturated. A reflection is never too saturated. We cannot see the tail. Why not? We can see the tail. And how do I make this tail go even more into the ambient? Just make it go. Pick the ambient color, low opacity. Okay, low opacity right here. And make it just mix all together. How are the clouds normally on those places? Uh, snowboard scenery. No, oh, the clouds are really stretched. Normally the clouds in those places, they come like, hey, gigantic. We can get those trees even closer, just a little bit, just a little bit. Huge screen fog. Yeah. So we make pretty much the background bright. Bright, bright, bright. And the charter dark. That's how we created the contrast between the background and the charter. say you can improve on ambient light doing the ambient light together the background and the charter light this is going to make things easier for you not only that body perspective careful with that body perspective try to separate well when it's sketch when it's face colors when it's line art when it is detailing because the more you feel that you're clean the more that you feel that hey i understand 100 person or close to that what I'm doing, the best are going to be your results. The best. It's a really upfront step. I see already a lot of sketch lines, but you, I see at the same time, you're trying to render it a lot. I truly recommend you separate those things because when you render a lot, only one specific space, you can feel like, hey, the rest is not improving. The artwork's not improving. It can help, it can happen that you sabotage yourself into thinking that your artwork's not improving and it's not good because you're detailing a specific area and the rest did not receive the same amount of attention. Of course, not everything is going to receive the same amount of details like you did here, but really just letting everything have the right shape is going to make magic for you. Letting it have the right shape. I can see already the shapes are very confused and fast. I don't know if you are trying to make this artwork fast, but I can sense on your strokes that they are really fast, really fast. I don't see them being slowly. These strokes here are very strong. In the sketch lines too, they are fast. I don't know if you're rushing, but I recommend a lot just taking your time.
Now, last thing of this artwork. Fur. How to make some smegzy fur. Make it really rebellious. Make it like, hmm, like a mean. I look tasty. I look like, oh, you know. That's exactly what we are going for here. Here in the main, smudge too. Let's get it. Where's the charter layer? Here. We're on 80% of strength. Sometimes I go to 50% of strength just to make everything blurry because I struggled a lot to make everything too hardcore. Too hardcore. Let me show how was my art three years ago. This is my artwork three years ago. Look how strong those lines are. And I was like, yeah, I'm killing it, the tails. <laughs> it's only three years ago. And what I could say that I learned the most it, between those three years, patience. I was like, oh, I gotta do fast, I gotta do everything fast. And now I don't do everything that fast. And I recommend that. I truly recommend that. Don't go cray cray doing everything too fast because these are the results you're gonna get. Let it take the time that it should be taking. That's what I learned the most in those three years. How do you pick a part of the drawing and modifies it? Like how I did in the glasses? Oh, liquefy. I go here on filter and then liquefy this one. Oh my, but first I gotta be in the right layer. <laughs> okay, now I'm the right layer. And then I click on liquefy. This is going to appear. I zoom in, normal zoom, the same zoom that we use on the drawing. We have these tools here. This one makes everything become smaller. <laughs> Look at the small nose! <laughs> and you have this one that makes everything huge, like... I get... I'm a huge nose guy. <laughs> and you have this one, that's the one that I use it, that you just drag things to the place that you want. Oh, by the way, you can make those... You can make those clouds blurred. Are the clouds passing the glasses? <laughs> I'm not gonna question, not gonna question, nah. I'm gonna go here in filter, gallery, uh, blur, motion blur, and motion to the side. Oh my, my cat is sniffing my knee. Here, yeah, that's a great blur. That's a great, this is enough blur. Feedback done. Careful anatomy, fur, more gentle strokes, overall gentle strokes, focus on anatomy again. Getting reference to make your artwork even more rich or thinking about a specific movie, a specific thing that you watch it and have the type of scenery that you can check out. Being sure about the character colors. It's really important to not forget the character's colors. I think that's all. Yeah, that's all. That's it for you, Batubat!